what's going on everybody? Jeremy from Whistle Kick. I don't know what episode this is gonna be, but as you can see, well, if you're if you're watching the video on YouTube, you can see. If you aren't, you can probably hear the difference in the audio quality. Longtime listeners know that that means I am using the traveling recorder, the little pocket recorder that I do sometimes for recording stuff, often after an event. And of course, it's a weekend, and a lot of weekends I have at events. And just leaving Atlantic City, New Jersey, from the Hall of Honors Action Martial Arts Magazine Mega Weekend. I believe that's the full title of the event. Um, apologies to Sifu Allen Goldberg if I'm if I'm dropping a word or two or, or messing up the exact title of that event. Of course, longtime listeners know Sifu Goldberg has been on the show, and we'll link to his episode. And if you're watching, you're seeing, hey, there's somebody else in the car with you, and I have my friend. Mr. I think we've agreed that's who you are. Mr. Paul and Milholland. And we went down there. Paul is my superfoot training partner and, and we've become good friends and, and just had a lot of fun. So we were down there this weekend and I just thought I would, you know, this will, this will be Paul's first time on air. We gotta get him on. We keep talking about doing your interview episode and that's gonna happen soon. <laughs> hasn't happened yet. That's 100% yeah, my, my fault. <laughs> 100% my fault that it hasn't happened. Uh, but we had we had a lot of fun, you know. There were some there were some folks that have been on the show, of course. Bill Superfoot Wallace and Terry Dow, Sensei Terry Dow, uh, so okay, Michael De Pasquale. Who else has been on the show? Was there? Uh, Steve Steve Hayes, Hayes, Sean Christine Bannon Rodriguez, Grandmaster Mark Shuey. Uh, who, who else? I'm like doing the doing the rounds in the exhibit hall. Or who else? was there and then of course some folks that we would love to have on the show wink wink nudge nudge people that I have reached out to uh, like Don the Dragon Wilson uh, Cynthia Rothrock Benny the Jad or Kitas well one of the you know when I think about the weekend uh, one of the things that was was a lot of fun so like a lot of events like this, there are similar events to this. This one's pretty big. I don't know if it, if it is the biggest as it is advertised, but it's definitely the biggest one like this I've been to. Yeah, it's big. But, um, you know, on the marketing, there was a special guest. And, of course, you know, who, who's the special guest going to be? You don't know. And a lot of you are going to recognize his name. Some of you may not know why. Bob Backlund was there. And, Paul, why don't you tell everybody who Bob Backlund is for those that don't know? Uh, he was a, a wrestler from back in the day, I think professionally and... Uh, uh, real wrestling and... Yeah, and, real wrestling and kind and, of the stage, and, and yeah, he was just and, uh, really good at both. And uh, yeah, it was a trip seeing him. I wish I was able to talk to him. <laughs> but he put on a, a little demonstration uh, going down the escalators. What, what do you call it, a pike? Yeah, he, uh, <laughs> he grabs the handrails on the escalator and brings his leg up in a pike and he holds that the entire way down the escalator. And this was not like a short escalator. And it is important to note that Mr. Backland is not a young man. I mean, what, he's, he's, how old is he? I'm guessing 60s, 70s. He's gotta be, Maybe he's at least in his 60s. Regardless, he has aged incredibly well and not just yes. be, because he was able to do this. I mean, the guy is, it's clear, he is still in jacked. Yep. You know, and he's rocking around in his white dress shirt and his, his red suspenders and the guy looked good, you know, and, and he was talking to a lot of people. Um, you know who I, I, I tried to connect with and it didn't happen. Um, and I always miss like the, a piece of the hyphenation, hyphenation of his name, but Kerry yes. Roku Tagawa. Grandmaster Tagawa, I believe, is what the, the sign on his his booth said. But the guy that I, I know is having played Shang Tsung in Mortal Kombat. Yes. I mean, he's been in a bunch of stuff, but he was he, he was giving massages, and I really wanted to get a massage and have Paul take a picture of me getting a massage from Shang Tsung because you know, like. If you if you remember from the video game or the movie, like his finishing move was to steal your soul, and I just thought that that was really ironic that he was giving massages. Yeah, we missed that. Too. We missed a lot of things. It seemed like it's too much. There was a lot going do. on. Absolutely. You know what? What did we do though? You know what was? You know we were down there um, for one big reason, of course. Yes. 
to support our instructor, Bill Wallace. Bill Wallace. And uh, the one seminar that really stuck out for me was the the Joe Lewis one. Uh, that was a lot of fun. Yeah. Uh, putting in those combinations of working from like a different fighting range than uh, we're used to the inside the pocket. So that, that was a lot of fun. Uh, I wish I was able to do more seminars, but I only did a a, a couple, and that one stuck out. Yeah, we had we had a, there were uh, three people that tested for Superfoot rank, and if I am correct, two of them are now new Superfoot black belts. So that was a lot of fun, and yeah, we weren't able to go to all the seminars. And for for folks that that may not know, you know, the name Joe Lewis comes up on the show. I don't want to say often, but you know, not infrequently. And of course. Mr. Lewis has passed away, passed away in, I want to say, 2011, but quite a few of his former students were there, and they're carrying on his tradition and the, the system of, I guess we can call it kickboxing, Yes. that he developed, and it blends pretty interestingly with the Superfoot stuff. Of course, if you remember those fights, Bill Wallace was known for his kicking, Joe Lewis was known for his kicking, but was also a dominant force inside. And, just from my outside perspective, it looks like that became more of his interest and passion as he got older and, and stepped out of competition. Because his combinations are just, they're, the ones he's passed out, they're awesome. Yeah. They're not always easy, but they are, are brutal, primarily striking, punching combos. So we got to play with that. Of course, the, the Joe Lewis guys are great guys. Yes. Love hanging out with them. Yeah. I've talked on the show about the value of going to events like this to meet people, to participate in seminars, to, to network, to connect. And, you know, you and I, I mean, just the fact that it gave us some time together, you know, we get four hours each way in the car, way back to and from Connecticut. Of course, I've got a few hours beyond that to get back to Vermont. But having having those connections, having those conversations about martial arts, but also not about martial arts, but with martial artists and remembering that we're all people and building those bonds. And that's my favorite thing about going to an event like this. You know, yeah, one of the ones about. that I like is, uh, I know it was in a forum I was talking about a couple weeks ago about, uh, you know, uh, instructor burnout, which is something that I, that I, I deal with because I, I teach six days a week. Uh, no, and it's just me. So uh, coming to an event like this is a great way to kind of, uh, you know, recharge your battery and, and come up with good ideas and just, you know, get refreshing takes on uh, different aspects of the martial arts. And so when you come back to your own school, you know, you come back with that uh, freshness and, and, and new ideas to, to make your school better. Yeah. yeah and that's, that's a real thing. I mean, um, yeah. how to handle in burnout, especially when you're the head of the school, especially when you don't really have a solid number two. I mean, you've got people that help you out. You've got some great students, I bet, quite a few of them. But it's not like you have somebody that's been training with you so long that you can hand off the reins and, you know, take off for a month. Yeah. <laughs> you know, a lot of schools do have that, yeah. but you, you don't have that yet. Not I'm yet. sure you will as you develop your students. But to go down and, and talk to people that struggled through that point in their in their school's development and, and realize that they're you know the challenges that you're having as a whether it's as a school owner or as a martial artist that other people are having them. to meet people that come from different styles different parts of the world and they're all the, you know we're all the same we're so much more the same than we are different yeah and to me that's one of the things that I love the most you know getting to further those relationships. Go easy pass. I love easy pass. Uh, I just said the dog. Oh, unpaid. Unpaid. <laughs> hey, because I forgot to put the easy pass on the dash. How many of those have I gone through? I think that was the third one. <laughs> Sorry, New Jersey. You can send me a bill. I'll pay. Um... <laughs> we had a fun night last night hanging out with some folks, you know. Uh, it's always interesting to hang out with martial arts people in a non-martial arts context, you know, like a handful of us at dinner last night. Because everybody's watching out, you know. Everybody's watching for, you know, what, what's gonna, what could go wrong, like where's the potential threat. So 
and we learned if you grab a hula hoop, <laughs> there might be some problems. Apparently, hula hooping at a restaurant in the in the entryway may upset the manager of said establishment, and that individual may look like they're going to start a fight with the hula hooper. We will say no more. Uh, other than there wasn't a fight. <laughs> but we will pick on this individual for quite a while because it was funny. Because how often do you almost get in a fight because of a hula Yeah. You know, I just, I, I love that we get to hang out with, with people that we don't know well, you know, and we get to know them a little bit better. You know, when I think about the folks that I know from competitions or seminars or whatever, you know, I, I've known some of these people for decades, but I don't get a lot of opportunity to get to know them as people. Yeah. And I think that that's so important. If we, if we were to go back next year, what would, what would you want to do a little bit differently? You know, we don't want to do the exact same thing. Well, probably like I mentioned earlier, just, just try to hit up a couple more of the the seminars, I know everything's pretty much jam-packed, and uh, for me it was my first time, so I was just trying to soak it all in, and uh, so maybe I, I would have been better prepared and, and circled some stuff down. Like I know we've done other events in other places where we've actually uh, mapped out, yeah, you know, piece by piece, and then kind of this one we didn't, and uh, yeah, definitely pains to to plan ahead because once you get there, you get kind of overwhelmed and. Uh, sure with all the stuff that, that's going on. Sure. And, you know, one of the things I'll throw in, and, and I've talked about this on the show, if you're going to a seminar, don't try and learn everything. Yeah. And if you're teaching at a seminar, don't try and teach everything. Pick one thing that you can build on, or if you're attending, take, pick one thing you can take away. And I'm glad you mentioned that, because that, that's the problem that I always have, is that especially with like a new student that's coming in, I want to excite them. And I show them way too much in a in a in a first class that they yeah. they you know it's easy for them to get overwhelmed. And I have to remind myself. So when you say stuff like that, hopefully we'll stick this time and say, oh yeah, I should probably just do one thing and stay with that. And they can take something away instead of throwing 15 things where they're not going to know you know which one to to go from. Yeah, to so. me, it's a, it's about taking that one concept. You know, if it's if it's a brand new student, you know, maybe you teach them how to you know, throw a front kick and a back fist and a reverse punch or, you know, whatever. But if you yeah. take those three moves, you can mix those up in a lot of different ways and, and, and really connect the dots in so many ways. If you're willing to do combinations of two and three, I mean, uh, three to the third, what's that, 27? You can come up with 27 combinations just off of back fist, reverse punch, and front kick. Some of them are gonna be stupid, but you doubt them, they're options. Yeah, and like I, I didn't get to participate, but I was watching the Benny the Jet, and it looked like he spent a lot of time just working on a, uh, how to clinch someone. Yeah. Which I mean, he did what, what you mentioned about you know doing one thing and just drone it. So, you know, he did his his way of clinching, and, and it looked like everyone was retaining it, and that it was uh, you know the way to go. And there's the value, you know. We yeah. Obviously, you know, you and I are both really familiar with the Superfoot stuff because of our participation in that organization. But if anyone has trained with Bill Wallace, they know that what he teaches is simple, but it's not easy. Yeah. And there's an elegance in that. And when he teaches his seminar, eh, to, to do it in an hour, he's not covering the same material that he's covering in a two or a three hour seminar. But you can come away with some concepts. Yeah. And that's what I love about the Superfoot system. And that's what you know I kind of use as the the yardstick for a lot of the other seminars that I take, is there a concept I can come away with that makes me better as a martial artist, something I can incorporate into my own personal version of martial arts that I can, you know, take, understand better, you know, something that changes my perspective perhaps, and I think that's really valuable. Yeah, just speaking about Superfoot, I know we're, we're a little bit biased towards him, but, Not at all. Um, <laughs> you know, during his seminar, he was doing the, the step-up fake hook kick. Yeah, and and then like a couple hours later, I was sparring, and uh, I always, I forget the fake and faint, and that's one thing that you know I probably need to get beaten over the head with because uh, you know I see you know Mr. Walls doing 
numerous times. But anyways, you know, just practicing that, and then a couple hours later during my sparring, I uh, I did that fake hook kick, and then the person fell for it. So uh, it just shows you that, you know, you can just implement it, you know, quickly. It's nothing that that takes, uh, you know, years and years. So yeah, these seminars that you know they teach one or two things, you know, you can take home and, and actually you know implement it in your in your training. Right. And you know, one of the things I've seen there's a an event coming up that. Uh, it looks like I'm going to be teaching after the first time, so I'm excited. Hey. I'm not going to jinx it and and say what it is, but uh, put on by a friend who's been on the show and some of the other people in the organization have been on the show. But bottom line, they have some folks come in that do jujitsu, and this is a school, a system that has no jujitsu whatsoever. But those folks that come in have been there, I want to say a half a dozen years in a row, and they're teaching like a very simple set of fundamentals that they're building on. You know, it's kind of the equivalent of, you know, back fist, reverse punch, front kick. Mm -hmm. And then maybe each year, they'll work on that equivalent, and then each year they might say, okay, back fist, reverse punch, front kick, and here's how you throw a side kick. And then maybe the next year, here's how you throw a roundhouse kick. And in doing that, the folks that attend each year are able to go back and work on it. And when they come in, they're able to add a little bit. They're able to refine a little bit. And no, they're not gonna rank in jujitsu, but they're actually able to learn over time from merely a few hours of instruction per year. And, and it, it, to me, that shows a lot of humility and understanding as an instructor. Because I think a lot of people just said, well, you know, you get to work with this group of people once a year, they'd be like, yeah, waste of time. Yeah. But it doesn't have to be. If you're giving people concepts, I mean, that, that's my that's my big push, I think, with anything seminar-wise. I mean, forget about the techniques. You've got your techniques. It's how do, you, how do you put them together? How do you understand what's going on? And practice is a big thing, because I'm sure that group, if they don't practice what they learned a year before... Oh, exactly. Then the instructors just have to re all, the same right. plot. Uh, not all of them do, for sure, yeah. but a number of them, you know, they're working together. They, they, you know, throw some mats down, refresh their memory. But I like that. Yeah. But there were, there were some other folks at this event that, you know, we didn't get to see. They weren't there a lot. Like, I didn't get to see Mark Henry. I was kind of excited about that. Another yeah. former <laughs> pro wrestler. Um, but I heard people talking about him that he was there. and. You know, it's funny because he's kind of a, a difficult guy to miss. He's a very, very large man. Um, yeah, I wanted to talk to Chuck Zito because I was a big fan of, the, of Oz growing up, but uh, I didn't get a chance. But yeah. he, was, he was one that I missed, but he I was, saw him around. But He I was surrounded by people all the yeah, time. Yeah, he was pretty right? popular. Uh, but it was nice. I got to, to speak with Grandmaster Shuey, the Cane Master, and... Yep. Aren't you Stephen Hayes? Oh yeah, I talked the, to him. He's a very nice guy. Oh yeah, yeah oh they're both great guys. Player. But it was fun because I met both of them the last time I was at this event, two years ago, and this was my first time getting to talk to them since we had recorded. So it was kind of, you know, it, it gave a little bit more context. You know, I felt like I knew them a little bit versus just kind of knowing who they are. And that was a lot of fun. But all in all, I guess, you know, the gist of it is, Get out and do this kind of stuff. It's, it's not it's not cheap. I mean, we could have done it cheaper, for sure. But the value for people that, whether martial arts to you is something you do, this is gonna open up your eyes. And, and you know, I'm not talking about this event specifically, but this gives you a broader perspective of what's happening in the martial arts world. Or if martial arts is a part of your life, you know, whether you consider that you live a martial arts lifestyle or not. And martial arts is something more to you than, you know, a few hours a week where you go and you do a thing. Then being able to interact with people that love martial arts as much as you in a non-training setting, you know, all the time outside the actual seminars or whatever. To me, that's the greatest value. If it wasn't for the connections that I had with martial artists as human beings, well, it's okay, it wouldn't exist. And I'm just very hyper aware of that. Yeah, and I think uh, 
the great thing about this type of stuff is, is uh, just getting out of your comfort zone. Yeah. And, and that's something I, I, I've seen a lot of people and, and, and students, I try and invite them with a lot of different things and, and a lot of them are hesitant. And I think it's just they want to, you know, stay where they're comfortable. Yeah. And, uh, you know, you're not going to grow that way. Because I, I spent uh, the majority of my martial arts training in striking arts. And I just started training Aikido uh, a couple years back. And yeah, it's, it's definitely a different range. I'm usually don't like people grab me or, or being that close, but I, I can just say it, it's just had so much benefits. Uh, you know, I, I my skill and, and level, uh, you know, adding that 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 range, which was out of my comfort zone, or, or you know, the, the couple times I've done seminars with uh, your buddy Richard uh, Hoover, you know, Hubbard, Hubbard. He does like a lot of the forearm or forearm or elbow range, which people are either good outside or they, they clinch, but that kind of mid range. You know, a lot of martial arts don't, don't uh, or at least the ones I've come in contact with, don't really deal with that kind of setting. Yeah. And uh, you know, that's why you know I love I love whenever he's 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 around. I, I always hit his uh, his seminars up because uh, I always find you know ideas and concepts or drills that really uh, help me with that that kind of uh, range. And, and, and there's a shout out to Sensei Hubbard who's been on the show. Great man, great friend. Yeah. If you're listening, I'll connect with you soon. We gotta get together and do some training again. But I think that's a good time to sign off. You know, um, again, I promise you I will bring Mr. Milholland's episode to you soon. <laughs> 2020. <laughs> oh, 2020. 2020. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. All right. Well, um, you can be episode, I don't know, like, how many would that be? Uh, I'll be your thousand at least a couple, we'll do, uh, at least you know, a couple hundred. Things. If we make it to a thousand episodes, yeah, you're getting there. You'll be there. Yeah, I mean, 300 right around the corner. Yeah. Um, yeah, it'd be at least a couple hundred episodes to get to 2020. So, yeah, yeah it'd be right around 450, 475. You'll be on before that. All right. I promise. <laughs> I promise everybody involved. So, uh, if you want to check out everything we got going on, it's whistlekick.com and products, all that. If you want the show notes, Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio.com. Social media is at Whistlekick on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and of course, this is a video episode, assuming that the GoPro on the dash has been recording this whole time. We will find out. I have no idea. Uh, but you can check out the episodes. All of them, even if they're just audio, are also available on YouTube. Sign up for the newsletter at Whistlekick.com or Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio.com. Please share these episodes with your friends. The show is growing and that allows us to bring more and more well-known guests to you. Like that, me. Like you. Hey. <laughs> yeah, you can get me a while. Out, yeah, now. I had to lock him in a car now you got going clout, so. <laughs> 65 miles an hour in order to bring you your first experience yeah. with my friend here. Uh, yeah. So, I appreciate it. <laughs> Thank, thanks for your, your willingness. All right. That's all I got for today. Until next time, train hard, smile. Have a great day.